Hello Internet and welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. In this episode we're going to be going over character creation. We're going to be talking about what I think, well, I mean we're just going to be talking about character creation. So in the last episode we created our world. If you missed that one go ahead and go back and watch that video. And that's this world the tutorial playthrough. So how do we access that world? We go to new game. And you can either choose a preset character, which uh, you can save templates of characters in case you want to reuse them. Uh, alternatively, the last character is always available. So if you create a character and then die and you want to make the exact same one, you would use preset and go to last character. We're not going to do that. Uh, you can go to a random character, which I generally would not recommend uh, until you know what you're doing. Fixed scenario, I literally have never ever used. I don't know. Oh, and it launched me right into a game. We don't want this. I'll go back uh, and I'll cut out this loading and whatnot. Okay, so I recommend not doing that. Uh, and then play now, I believe, also puts you right into the game. What we're looking for is custom character. This is what you'll do 90% of the time because it allows you a lot of control over what character you're playing, what scenario you're starting in, and that sort of thing. So go ahead and select custom character and it will pop up your world list and we want to go to the world we just created you probably have a lot fewer worlds than i do so tutorial playthrough is the one i set up for this and now we will load all of the mods and all of the information that the game needs that can take a little bit of time depending on your computer if you're running into a lot of loading uh, time if it's taking you a long time one thing you can do is restart your computer I noticed on my old computer that the longer the computer was running the harder it was to load and sleep and things like that have time pass in the game so if you're running into that one thing you can do is restart your computer um, highly would recommend doing that occasionally it's important for your computer so we're immediately faced with points and what does this mean well as we create our character, we're going to spend points and we're going to gain points through taking positive and negative traits, uh, setting up our statistics and things like that. I recommend this just determines what points are available. If you go free form, you basically can use however many points you want. You can create the strongest character in Cataclysm history. I generally don't recommend that. You should learn to work within the point system. Multiple pulls mean that Points gained from certain categories can only be spent on those same categories. So if we go to, say, traits, and we get a bunch of points by taking negative traits, we then can only spend those points on other traits. We cannot use them to raise our stats. So generally, in my opinion, single pull is the way to go. This means that no matter where the points come from, we can spend them wherever we want. I think this is best for beginners, and I know a lot of people in the community use single pull as it is. Multiple pulls is the default, I believe, but I personally never ever play with that just because I like being able to character uh, to cater my character in whatever ways I want, set them up however I want, and I don't really like arbitrary limitations on that. So although it is not the default, I recommend single pull, especially for beginners, because it makes things a lot easier. So if we go to the next tab, which you can use by hitting tab, you can back tab, which is shift tab to go back in the menu. Uh, and tab to go forward. Again, I I use the angled, uh, the greater than, less than signs. That may not be default key settings anymore, um, but that's another way if it is set up that you can do that. So let's go over to scenario. This is the next step in creating a character. This is really the first step in creating a character. And you'll see we have quite a few options here. There used to be many, many more, but they were compiled into smaller groups uh, about uh, three or four or six months ago. And you'll see a lot of them have the tag challenge. Uh, some of them are, it's basically a scenario is where you're gonna start in the game. Now the evacuee scenario is the default setting and this is the one we're gonna be playing because if this is your first game or second or third game, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you take the evacuee scenario. This scenario has been improved in recent months uh, and generally is the safest and best starting scenario for a new player, period, full stop, no discussion about that. As you get bored with this, there are other scenarios that you can start checking out, but for now, we're going to go with the evacuee scenario. Anything labeled with a challenge is pretty much guaranteed to kill you if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, for instance, the island prison. Oh, a good thing to note as well, if you're on an older version of Cataclysm, your menu may look different than mine. If you're on a newer version of Cataclysm, your menu may look different from mine. And that's because scenarios are added and removed, not removed, they're added and recategorized as the game 
progresses. So if you're on an older version, you will have many more of these listed. Uh, if you're on my current version, they are just put together into categories. And then if you're on a newer version, you'll probably have newer scenarios that are not currently available. So for instance, the uh, overrun scenario was added about a month ago. The uh, island prison was added about six months ago. We are constantly evolving the game, so these are changing all the time. Anything listed with a challenge is in fact challenging. Starting in a lab for a new player is just going to mind flood you, and you're going to die, so I would not recommend that. If you are played a few games and you're looking for other scenarios to start with, I would recommend the shelter... No, not sheltered. I would recommend uh, safe place. Where is that? Safe place scenario. And the thing about scenarios is that you can change your location in the final screen using forward slash. So here it's just shelters, but let's say we go to, no, nope, don't do that. Let's say we go to that, oh, stop doing that, to the safe place scenario. This is just a uh, overarching category that adds lots of safe places together. So we would select that and then we would go to our character description screen, use forward slash as indicated here and it will let you change your location. And here you'll see we have many options that are very different from each other, starting in a refugee refugee center, which is spelled wrong, refugee has two E's, uh, is very different from starting in a cabin, is very different from starting on a lighthouse island. So if you're struggling to find where exactly to start, I'd recommend starting with the safe place scenario uh, once you're sick of the evac shelter. Other easy ones, um, Really, I would just recommend Safe Place uh, for new players, honestly, if I had to pick one. Um, some of the large buildings can be fun uh, and easy, but whatever. No, no, let's not talk about that. So we're going to select the evacuee scenario, and you'll see at the top it mentions points, and currently we have eight points. If you take a challenging start, you'll see it has additional points that will be given to you because these are difficult scenarios, and the evacuee shelter start does not give any points because it's a, the most basic fundamental start that you can get in Cataclysm. So we're going to be going with the evacuee start and I recommend you do the same. So we're going to go to the next tab which is profession. So scenario determines where you start in the game and profession determines what your character starts with Okay, in that location. So uh, in the evacuee scenario basically every possible profession is available to you. If you pick a different scenario, say we start in a lab, you'll see very few professions are available to us, and that's because only certain types of characters would be in those locations. So depending on the scenario you pick, you will have different things available to you, but the uh, professions available to the evacuee shelter are basically every profession that's in the game, possibly with some small exceptions. Now, if you're really, really struggling with the game and, uh, you know, having a hard time, the general recommendation is the Bionic Prepper. You can search this menu by using uh, forward slash, which is the same slash we were talking about before. It's located on the question mark key uh, on standard QWERTY keyboards that most of us will be using. You can search using that key and we can type in the Prepper and you'll see the Bionic Prepper. Uh, and here on the right side, it shows what that character comes with. Bionic Prepper is one of the most overpowered starts that you can get. We can navigate this, by the way, by using left or right or four and six on the uh, numpad. And you can scroll all the way down. See, they start with Bionics, which makes the early game very easy. We're not gonna be doing that, but that is the one I recommend when people say, I can't, get, I can't live for more than four days. I always say, you know, why not try the Bionic Prepper? It's a very powerful class. That will pretty much guarantee your early game survival. We're not going to do that. We can clear our filter by deleting and pressing enter. And we'll go back to the, the full list here. Survivor is the default start. Uh, and you'll see here it starts. It doesn't give us any points or anything. They start with some basic clothing, including some winter gear, which can be valuable if you're doing a winter starting scenario. Uh, you'll see we start with some water, a uh, fire starting source, as well as a pocket knife and a cell phone, which will allow us to tell the time of day. Most classes start with a uh, cell phone or a watch, which will let you have, you know, to know what time of day it is, but not so many start with knives, water, and matches. So those can be pretty valuable. And in fact, we're going to be going with that in this playthrough, uh, just because this is probably what you would start with. This menu can be really overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for. Many of the classes are for role play reasons. They don't have tons of benefit or negative to them. So let's say I want to play role play as a lost submissive. 
uh, which is, let's not use that as an example. Let's say we start as a clown. You'll see we start with clown-based gear and really nothing of value. And because we start with nothing of value, this actually would give us one more point. If you're looking for a really basic class, I recommend the backpacker. Can't type because I can't see the keyboard. Backpacker is a very standard class that doesn't really get anything, but they start with a backpack, which is pretty valuable in the game. For now, I think I might be mind flooding you. We're just going to go with Survivor because that is the default. It doesn't cost or give us any points. And again, we do start with some benefits like a knife and water. So we're going to just leave that alone. Feel free to pick something else, uh, but I would recommend staying away from, say, a tweaker uh, because you'll see they start with amphetamine withdrawal which is uh, a negative effect in the game. So be careful when you're picking these. Make sure you look at all addictions and traits and skills. Some traits and skills will be added to your character depending on what you pick. So here, for instance, this person gets the true food person trait, which we would not have to take in the traits menu. They also start with two speaking, um, and then we can see their gear and whatnot. And then bionics are listed at the bottom. So it's important to look at every category when you choose a class. But for now, again, we're gonna go with Survivor. Let's tab to the next tab. Here we have stats. The most important thing I can tell you about character creation is that you should read everything, right? If you're, uh, you know, I'm not gonna give you every bit of information because I am not that smart. There are gonna be things that I forget. There are gonna be things that I leave out. So the best thing you can do is read the description given in case I miss something. So important, from, from a stat perspective, there's really only one important stat as far as I'm concerned, and that is strength. Strength makes you, it gives you more H, well, so it says right here, base HP is 84. If we increase this, you'll see we now have 87 hit points. That is a small increase, but I generally try to pump my characters up to like 13 strength, which is pretty high. Um, you know, if 8 is average, 13 is significant. Um, but it's it really makes the game a lot easier because it increases the amount of hit points that you have. It increases your carry weight, which is not super relevant, but it can be handy to have a higher value. And then it also increases your damage bonus when you're fighting in melee. And this is uh, pretty important in the early, early game because most of the time you're not going to get your hands on a gun on day one unless you start a profession that has a gun. And some of them do have guns. Um, but I generally recommend that you pump as many points as you can into your strength. Uh, dexterity determines your ability to hit with a firearm, a bow, that sort of thing, a ranged weapon. It also increases your ability to hit in melee. So this would be a, a, a exactly what it says, a two hit bonus. If you're used to classic RPG terms, strength is your plus to damage and dex is your plus to hit. Uh, I usually don't put a lot of points in dexterity unless I know I'm going to be playing with a gun in the early game. Uh, but it's fine to do that if that's something you're interested in. Intelligence, the primary thing about intelligence that I can really talk about is that it speeds up crafting. Uh, or I'm sorry, I think it increases your experience when crafting. It may just be speed when crafting. I'm not 100% on that. But the significant thing here is read times. If we increase this, we read faster. And in Cataclysm, you raise your skills primarily by, by reading and crafting. So intelligence helps with that. Uh, I usually don't put a lot of points into it. I usually try to put one or two if I'm able. And then finally, we have Perception. Perception is... It's not super useful. I almost never put points into it. But you should put at least a nine in your Perception. And that is because at, at eight... So at nighttime, your character has a vision radius in the dark. And if you have perception nine, that increases one tile further. So that jump from eight to nine is most important. And I think at 12 is the next bump. I'm not 100%. It may be higher than that. Um, but I always, always, always put a point in for perception. Now, you probably don't have a lot of points to spend currently on your character. So what you would do is go to traits. And this is by far the most confusing and difficult to explain part of characters. But if we take negative traits, it gives us points. So that would enable us to put more points in our attributes. For now, I'm going to leave everything at 8. And we're going to go look at our, our traits. Okay, so traits. Am I at 8? I am. Traits. Uh, let's get rid of bad back as well. We don't really want that. Traits shape your character, right? Your character currently gets shaped by stats, traits, and skills. Those are the three main things that influence your character's ability 
to do pretty much anything in the game. So from left to right, here we have a column. These are positive traits. These are all beneficial. They will cost points in order for you to take them. Again, I'm not going to cover every single trait. The best thing you can do is read the green text at the bottom of the screen, which will tell you what this trait does. Okay, the next column is negative traits. We shift between them by using the arrow keys or the four and six on your D-pad, or not to your D-pad, on your numpad is how we shift between columns. The middle, tra the middle column here is negative traits. All of these will give us points. So if we take addictive personality, you'll see we now have 10 points to spend. And you'll see it also highlighted addiction resistant, and that is because those two traits cannot be taken together. You'll see addiction resistant means you're less likely to become addictive, addicted, but addictive personality makes you more likely to become addicted. So those two things can't exist on the same character. So let's get rid of that. Every, everyone will earn you points which again, we will spend on stats and skills and things or on positive traits. And then this third com, uh, column here is just for your appearance. So like you select um, the, the way it's handled in games, these count as traits or mutations. So what we'll go, we'll go facial hair with a goatee. We'll give ourselves a brown afro, I guess. And then at the bottom, so they're separated into categories in here as well. Facial hair at the top, regular uh, hair at the middle section. And then the bottom is your skin tone. We'll go light brown. Uh, and that's that's the extent of that column. That's not really relevant. The only thing of note is that females can have facial hair. So uh, if you end up playing a female, don't select facial hair unless you really, really want to. Um, so not going to go over every single trait. The ones I think you should take. So the ones I typically take, we'll talk about those. Uh, I take ugly and truth teller. Ugly means that... Um, NPCs in the game will have a harder time interacting with you because you're ugly. They won't like you as much, is my understanding. This I usually take because I don't really play with NPCs, so it's a free extra point that doesn't really affect me. Truth teller is the same thing. When you talk to a NPC and you try to lie to them, you have a lower chance of succeeding. Doesn't really matter to me because uh, I don't really interact with NPCs, and even if I did, I would just tell them the truth. So I usually take those two. Those are relatively free points especially if you don't play with NPCs. I also generally take um, poor hearing, which I don't recommend for a new player because it makes it harder for you to hear things in the game. I often take lactose intolerance because I don't care. We don't need to eat milk products in the game. And I usually take heavy sleeper because it, it's, again, pretty free points. So what would I recommend you take and what would I recommend you not take? Again, I think ugly and truth teller are good, safe picks. Uh, other than that, I would highly recommend that you read these things as you go uh, because they can have a pretty profound impact on your game. So for instance, slow footed making you 15% slower on flat ground. There's a lot of flat ground. Every time you're on the road, every time you're on a sidewalk or in a house, you're going to be 15% slower and that's really bad and you don't want that. Uh, so I would really recommend you read these things and it's going to be hard for you to know in the early game when you're first learning to play, what is safe to take and what is not. I would stay away from the weight uh, traits because they can really be hard for a new player who doesn't understand the systems. And I would recommend that if you're going to take one of the food traits, so there are different traits that affect what you can safely eat. So for instance, a meat intolerance means that if you eat meat products, you will get sick or you have a chance of getting sick. Same, and you get less nutrition from those foods. Uh, that would be meat intolerance, lactose intolerance, junk food intolerance, hates vegetables, hates fruits. There are a couple like that. I would really recommend you not take meat intolerance because meat is a very high calorie food. If you're going to take one, I usually take lactose intolerance. It's the one that impacts, I think, the least in the game. Additionally, you could take hates vegetables. Um, but again, it's not just, oh, I'm not eating a vegetable. It's I don't like eating products with veggies in them, and that can be kind of a lot of stuff. So I would recommend if you're going to take one of those, I usually take lactose intolerant, which I think we'll take on this character. Um, the rest, it really is important that you read them and uh, try to understand how that might impact the game. So like schizophrenic, you suffer from delusions, which can give full-on hallucinations. That can be really problematic, uh, which you might not realize that just reading this. Uh, but that can be really problematic. Um, similarly, 
uh, really it's just about experience. You're going to learn which ones are safe to take and which ones are not. So we're not going to take a bunch of negative ones because I'm going to play the way I expect you to be playing. So I'm not going to take my normal ones. In the positive column, there are some that are absolute necessities. So I talked about night vision in the game and how it's smaller uh, and you, you don't have a huge range of night vision. I recommend taking the night vision trait. It does cost two points, but it increases the area you can see at night. And as a new player, you're going to be doing a lot at night because it's safer when the zombies can't see you. So I pretty much always take this trait no matter what game I'm playing. Highly, highly recommend it. Additionally, I recommend taking Pack Mule. Uh, you'll see it increases our 40% our 40 volume that we can carry. Uh, carrying things in Cataclysm is broken down into two categories. There's weight and there's volume, just like real life, which determine how much stuff you can carry. I found when I learned the game that I was constantly, constantly struggling to have enough volume to carry things. And so I always take Pack Mule. It's not as important as it used to be uh, in current versions of the game. This is not super, super important, but I usually take this. Other ones that I hear people say a lot, people take quick. It basically gives you 10% more speed in all situations. You attack, uh, you, everything costs 10% less action points, basically, um, or moves or whatever you want to call it. So that's one that people very frequently take. It does cost three points. I don't usually take it, but you can if that's something that interests you. The rest, it's the same thing. Read them, try to understand them. Um, yeah, those are the ones I generally take. Quick is one that I hear recommended basically all the time. And then Robust Genetics is a later game trait that you would use when you take mutations. It increases the chance of positive mutations. That's another one that people often, often take. For now, we're not going to take any more. We're just going to go Night Vision and Pack Mule. And you'll see, because we didn't really take a lot of negative traits, we only have five points. We could put those points in the skills, but skills are the most easy thing to raise in the game. It's very hard to get new traits and it's very hard to increase your stats. So I recommend not putting any points into skills. We will grind those up manually because they're the easiest thing to do. Uh, I recommend putting all your remaining points into your stats. So again, we're gonna go to nine perception to increase our night vision radius. And I'm just gonna put the rest into strength um, because it increases our HP and makes us more, uh, makes us better when we use melee weapons. Uh, uh, we could take a point out of that and put some points into like melee weapons and stuff, but I would rather just put the point into strength because once you're in the game, unless you're using a mod, there's no way to raise these outside of bionics and mutations, which are late game items. So they're not things we're going to have access to for probably at least the first in game month. Uh, so I think that's about it for character stuff. We go to the final menu, which is description, where we can name our character. You can hold asterisk to select a random name. Alternatively, you can choose your gender using the at symbol, uh, which I usually just randomize, but we gave ourselves a beard, so we're gonna stick with Mayo. And we'll randomize our name. And we're Wilfred Ventura. Uh, once again, we can use the forward slash to select our location if our scenario allows us to do that. And you'll see here we just have three shelters. So we're just going to start with the default shelter. Then we have uh, a brief overview of the character we've created. If we use the exclamation point, we can save this for the future. So we could say like basic survivor. Uh, so that in the future we could just select presets and this would show up for us to use at any time. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then finally, we either go back and change things or we go to move forward again using tab and it will prompt us are you sure you're finished this is case sensitive and we're going to hit yes uh and the game's going to load up basically that time which it probably took a lot longer on your computer that time is the game generating the location uh generating the world around you generating where the monsters are npcs are items are in the area around you so that can take a little bit of time if you're on an older computer once we get in the game, uh, this is where we're going to end the episode. Uh, you'll see I'm currently using a tile set. This is a, a specific tile set. Your game will look different if you're on a default installation. So I think the next episode will be me explaining what tile set I currently am using and how to install that on your computer. 
So for now, we're going to wrap this episode up. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully I wasn't too long-winded. Um, and yeah, we'll be back with, with, uh, with the tile set tutorial in the next episode. So for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, maybe like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you next time.